Welcome back to the COS Business Podcast. My name is Andrew Hasley and I'm the host of the show. Today, I'm sitting here with Maritza and Flip Aguilera and they're going to talk about a, a little festival that they're putting on. Do you guys want to give just some... just a advice? little wing thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Best of the West Wing Fest, Saturday, August 6th at FH Beer Works off of um, Powers and Constitution over on the east side. Uh, we're going to have uh, restaurants competing to see who's got the best wings in the springs. We're going to have uh, non-wing vendors uh, selling their food. We're going to have non-food vendors, uh, small businesses selling a bunch of cool, uh, neat uh, local stuff. Um, what else? We're going to have live entertainment. We're going to have bands, comedians. We're going to have some nerd night talks. It's going to be informative history of buffalo wings. Everyone's curious to know about that, right? Why beer uh, in Colorado is better than anywhere else, of course. Mm -hmm. um, what else, babe? Good times. <laughs> yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, good times. Nice. Yeah, so what kind of... Uh, inspired this why do you go, why, why a wing fest mm. why a festival at all <laughs> now a word from our sponsors planet duct offers astronomical air duct cleaning with the most powerful vacuum trucks in colorado they have taken air duct cleaning to a new intergalactic level that is far more powerful and proactive than any on the market in el paso county or southern colorado Reach out to Planet Duck for any of your air duct cleaning needs. Power Tool Safe is revolutionizing tool tracking and protection for everybody. With Power Tool Safe, you can protect the equipment that keeps your business running. Go to PowerToolSafe.com and start your new account now and register up to $10,000 in tools for free. Recon Marketing is the fastest growing social media agency in Colorado. Recon focuses on becoming an extension of your business while providing social media management, review management, and digital marketing. Recon Marketing, putting you on the radar. Sheath Underwear has a pouch for the boys. It is everyday underwear for every man. 100% money back on the first pair if you don't like it. Visit sheathunderwear.com and enter the code COSBP20 to get 20% off your order. I think it was October of 2021. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody posted in one of those Facebook groups, I think it was the Colorado Springs word of mouth. Mm -hmm. And somebody who had just moved here asked the question, who makes the best wings in Colorado Springs? Oh. So people started answering, you know, this restaurant, that restaurant. I was like, oh, I love wings. So look at all these fantastic places I get to check out now. He doesn't love wings. He's wing obsessed. Oh, okay. Let's get that straight. <laughs> and how long have you been wing obsessed? Oh, since high school. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, some guy from Atlanta eventually came on and answered. And he's like, oh, we used to have a wing fest in Atlanta. And then some guy from Louisiana who moved not too long ago was like, we used to have a wing fest in Louisiana. And I was like, well, we used to have a wing fest in Miami. And then I went to Google and typed in, when is the Colorado Springs wing fest? You filled a gap. Cricket. <laughs> Nothing. It did not exist. And then I called a friend of mine who I knew from Miami who lives now in Fair Play. And he'd been to several festivals throughout Colorado. And I was like, do you know if there's a wing fest in uh, Colorado at all? And he's like, not that I know of. Like, there's and chili fests. Yeah. There's, there's beer fests. Oh, yeah. Lots there's definitely beer fest. Beer fest. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, uh, and he was like, yeah, I don't think there's one. And he's like, what do you think if I throw one? I wish he would have told me it was a crazy idea then. <laughs> but uh, he did it. He's like, that's a good idea. <laughs> and then I just started asking more and more people. And everybody seemed very open to the idea. And uh, now we have Best of the West Wing Fest. So if you search on Google, Colorado Springs Wing Fest now. Mm -hmm. the or best just of the Colorado West. Wing Fest probably. Yeah, yeah. Colorado, because there's no other wing fest. There is a fried chicken festival in Denver. Okay. But that's any type of fried chicken. Mm -hmm. where ours is specifically wings. 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 So are you a fan of hot ones? I like all types of wings, but... Uh, no, hot ones, the show. Oh, the, yeah. I, I, it's a cool show. Yeah. Definitely trying to see if people can make it through that, yeah. that whole thing. Uh, I don't know that we're going to do that specifically, but mm -hmm. we are going to have a hottest wing competition, which is sponsored by the Keller Williams Group with Ryan Van Ornum, if you know yeah. him. Yeah. He was up at a People's Tiny House Festival, too. So. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, I think he does a show for his whole real estate thing called Lost in the Sauce. Oh, yes, he does. He was uh -huh. telling me about that. Yeah. So basically, he's like, oh, let me be in charge of finding the sauces for this hot wing. <laughs> I'm like... It. <laughs> you know, it's actually funny. Uh, I was speaking of everything is just so c congruent. It's wild. I was speaking of TJ Miller and how he uh, 
he sells hot sauce at the end of his, his show. Mm-hmm. Well, I actually went to go see that show. He was he was at Three East Comedy Club a couple awesome. weeks ago. Literally walked in there and saw Ryan Van Ornem, and we we hung out the whole entire time. I was his, sitting at his table because I, I just went there by myself, mm-hmm. and so him and his his girl his his fiance I think yes uh, they they we just chilled and. Uh, so that's just kind of the connection there, you know. Yeah. TJ well, Miller, the, the Wings, Rent Van Orna. You know, Three E's is actually competing. They're going to submit two wings. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so they're, you know, they everything ha- is congruent. They have wings there, don't they? they yeah, they okay. do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they are also sponsoring the Clean Comedian portion of the Wing Fest. So Ooh. we're trying to get two. We have one for sure confirmed. We're waiting for the other okay. one. Okay. But yeah. uh, there will be some clean comedy. So is, is I know I know Mark uh, Mark Masters. That's kind of his brand. Is uh, I don't know if he's in or not yet. I know uh, Eric told me there was Russell Keller okay. who is in. And again, yeah. we're waiting for. The and we want to keep it clean because mm-hmm. it's a family event. Yeah, so yeah. We, this is not just like a college person event. It's not mm-hmm. an old person event. It's like it's an everyone event. For we sure. want the whole family to be there and to have a good time. And you know, we we need to have it nice and clean. Have you uh, reached out to Mel Austin or or the Cowboy Comedian? I have not. <laughs> mm-hmm. They've both I don't been know on, that I've met him yet. They've both been on on this show. Oh, and, cool. Okay. Uh, they 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 do clean comedy, mm-hmm. uh, and so I think that I think I actually have met Mel Austin mm-hmm. at one networking meeting once. Yeah, I bet because he does networking a lot. One of his biggest clients is well, one of the main things that he offers is doing comedy for corporate events to you know to help you know build that culture, yeah. and so it like keeps it clean but for the most part. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's cool. I, I love seeing the, the synch- synchronicities. Are you guys going to have your own hot sauce one of these days? <laughs> never know. Well, yeah. yeah let's see. <laughs> you never know what opportunities yeah. come from uh, any of the crazy ideas that, again, you try to make a reality. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Where How Best many of ideas have come sauce? your way since you started all this stuff? A lot. Uh, about one every three months. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Man, how many of them have you been able to really... Take uh, a handle love and make a reality. Yeah, uh, well, the 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 main one is Veeam and Visuals. This podcast is one, mm-hmm. uh, and that's that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> but that that makes sense too. Is like the the frequency of businesses, you know, you know, succeeding is very low anyway. So if, if mm-hmm. I create 10 businesses, then I have a better chance of having one that succeeds. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. Yes, for sure. Uh, but I also know that focus too. It's like, don't have a, like Will Smith says, uh, before you slap Chris Rock. Uh, <laughs> 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 he said, don't have a plan B because of distraction plan A is what he said. <laughs> yeah. uh-huh. Basically just burn the sails. Mm-hmm. We're, we're staying here and sticking it out. And it is interesting to find that, that balance mm-hmm. because she has said it and... Uh, you know, doing an event will frustrate you from time to time. And you ask yourself, why am I doing this at all? Because, oh, yeah. <laughs> but that's business. This, mm-hmm. yeah, that's bi- And that's what I've realized. A lot of, to your point, businesses fail. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if it's because the business was going to fail or the people just don't realize how much it really takes. Mm-hmm. A lot of, <laughs> and then there's that concept of the, the three feet from gold, you know. Yeah. They, mm-hmm. they give up, you know, right when they're about to actually see it. They don't see it through. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that's what this experience has really taught me. Mm-hmm. Like, I've I've had to, and you're gonna probably resonate with this. Really, tune into my inner Grant Cardone. Okay, <laughs> and be like, you you just gotta keep keep your head down and keep going. Yeah, and there's gonna be moments, but keep your mm-hmm. head down and, and keep going. And I I will admit, I will admit, there's there's times that I'm like, why why like I have a, a really I'm very successful in my nine to five. I, mm-hmm. I, do I need to be doing this? No, probably not. I, I I don't need the frustration. I don't need. I I already spent enough time working. I'd like to enjoy my life, but I believe that this is going to be something that will provide enjoyment to everyone else. Bringing that community together, it's very important to us. We've only been here just last week. We celebrated our two-year anniversary of moving to Colorado Springs mm-hmm. from Miami. So in, in those two years, we have two successful monthly events. We have Memoirs, True Stories, Unfiltered. We have uh, Nerd Night, uh, COS. And now we're trying to, to have this third annual event that's much larger mm-hmm. than, than what we would have ever thought it, it was going to be. Um, so it, it has been very re- rewarding. And if it wasn't for him, I would have probably called it quits many times already. For sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah but, you know, I've been in here talking about jujitsu. Jujitsu yes. is what teaches me not to quit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just, it might be uncomfortable, but if you can breathe and just stay in the moment, the opportunity will present itself to take action. For sure. 
Yeah, and I I, I, I want to talk a little bit about more about uh you, you how you have a, a job and, you, and you're you're very successful at, at what you do. Uh, but I I I I know just based off of everything else that you do, you find a passion in in putting on and bringing people together. That's something that you love doing. Or yeah, you, you wouldn't be doing all these things. It's true. <laughs> it's true. Uh, you know, this is a passion project for sure. Um, our sophisticated events as a as a whole as a. Um, as a company that brings people together, uh, brings the community together, because you know people think of events and events company, and they think of weddings and bat mitzvahs and birthdays and all that kind of stuff. That's not what we're doing. Mm-hmm. We're we're bringing the community together in meaningful and creative ways and uh, engaging the community to to come together. Um, so so no, you cannot book sophisticated events for your next wedding or for your next birthday. I but don't know. It, it depends on how much you're willing. We can make it an event for you. <laughs> for sure, it'll bring your community <laughs> together. Yeah. And you have DJ skills. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh-huh. this guy. Yeah, he's got. He definitely has a, a skill for music. So yeah. yeah. But you know, um, it, it is a passion of mine, and and giving back and doing something meaningful. Yeah, I I feel good with my job, with my nine to five. I feel good. It's not like I wake up and I dread going to work in the morning like a lot of people do. Mm -hmm. Um, I I love my job. I love the people that I work with. I like the company that I work with. So I'm, I'm, I'm content with that aspect of my life. But this aspect, sophisticated events, allows me to be a bit more creative and allows me to tap into those um those i guess skills of mine that go untapped on my mm-hmm. everyday so yeah and it's it's it seems like it's very fulfilling uh, yes. doing these things yeah yeah although absolutely. it may be very overfilling it's, sometimes <laughs> <laughs> yeah sometimes you know you, that glass <laughs> goes empty and yes. when that glass gets empty you know you need to you need to build it back up you need to recharge find the way that uh find the things and the ways that help you recharge your batteries again what are what are those some some of those things for you well this weekend two weeks less than two weeks before the wing fest what are we doing well my birthday is coming up this week and we're going camping so being in nature that's one of the reasons why we moved here so that is definitely something that really helps me feel f- full again mm-hmm. um and we're we're going to rifle we're staying at rifle falls state park we're going to go hike. We're going to go see Hanging Lake. Mm-hmm. We made reservations to see Hanging Lake the year we moved here. And that there was a fire. Mm. And the fire spread everywhere except the immediate area where Hanging Lake is. And people that follow Hanging Lake and like that, that hike, they were like, oh, my God, this is like some divine intervention, right? Like everything else was burned to a crisp, but Hanging Lake stayed untouched. Um, the following year, they opened the trail back up again, and I think it was like open maybe for a month or just like a couple of weeks. And what happens after a fire? Flash floods. Oh, okay. So then they had to close it again the following year. So this is the first year that it opened and was able to stay open. Mm-hmm. Fingers crossed. Knock on wood. Um, uh, and we're we have reservations. So you've to been go waiting see it again. for two years. We've been waiting for two years to be that's able cool. to go to this hike. So that's let's, let's yeah. see. That's going to be interesting because I know how I am. I I with an event coming up in two weeks. Mm. Uh, <laughs> try try to relax as much as you can, but it's going to be hard. I bet. <laughs> well, this guy he was trying to convince me not to go on this trip, okay. and I'm like, no, we're going on this trip. It's happening. Yes, <laughs> it's going to happen with I was or like, you know. Let's do something bigger after. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's do this, which is nice, mm-hmm. and and it's semi local, right? It's just about four hour drive from here. It's it's not that far, and then when we finish up with Wing Fest and our other events, our monthly events for for August. We'll go somewhere. We'll do something real big and and we'll disconnect completely. But Mm -hmm. for now, like I I need this. I know for, for my sanity, Sanity check. I need this trip, so that's, For that's sure. definitely what keeps me going. <laughs> it's, it's important, you know, because oh, yeah. 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 If you don't take care of you, who's gonna take care of you? <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. The dirt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the dirt. The dirt. Yeah, yeah. So before you guys came to uh, Colorado Springs, were you guys doing events uh, before? No. <laughs> no, I like it. <laughs> no, we were very involved in our community. Our friends were doing events, and we were definitely regulars at those events. And we mm-hmm. saw, you know, 
we were definitely a part of those communities. So that's kind of what spurred us to create sophisticated events and and to bring that mm -hmm. here is to have that same sense of community mm -hmm. no one else was doing that and we're not the kind of people to just wait around and wait for someone to bring it so mm -hmm. we just did it ourselves action takers yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah for better or worse we made things happen <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah so 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 you said it's uh the the actual company that puts on memoirs, puts on Nerd Night, puts on the Wing Fest, you guys have actually incorporated that and made it a company? Yep. Sophisticated okay. Events, LLC. Sophisticated Events, LLC. Yep. Nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Colorado Springs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's cool. So uh, what has been the process of, I guess, being an event company and how are you guys uh, making it happen? How are you guys getting people to come? How are you guys growing awareness? And, you know, making revenue, I guess. <laughs> well, being that she mentioned that we are on our two-year anniversary, when we moved here, we only knew two people, mm -hmm. which were the friends that moved here from Miami, okay. that we would come visit, which is what planted the seeds of us wanting to come here. So imagine moving here in 2020 in the middle of a pandemic. It's hard to meet people. And then when did we start Memoirs? Was... May? May of 2021, right? So mm -hmm. COVID is finally starting March. to subside. March, March, March. It was March. It was March. March of 2021. The nerd Night was May. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's March of 2021, right? So you're fresh off of 2020. And how do we even get people to believe in this vision? And I think what I did is I just hit the ground running networking, mm -hmm. right? And just you sure meeting did, yes. people, <laughs> meeting, ever, talking to anybody, listening to anybody. And... I didn't have any intention of actually doing any of these things. Actually, most of the things I'm doing here in Colorado Springs, I had no intention of doing. You just you wanted know? to ride bikes, you know? Well, I <laughs> wanted to ride bike and I would, you know, find clients and mm -hmm. my personal training and yes, health coaching great. and all that, which I still am doing. Mm -hmm. That is happening still. But, you know, it was like, you know, none of these cool events that we used to have in Miami exist here. And I really enjoyed those communities and listening to those stories and learning new things and you know, I really wish they were here. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, through going through networking meetings, I finally found three people that were willing to actually get on a stage. Mm -hmm. And then I was just about telling everybody, hey, come check this out and see what you think. And uh, you have been a part of both Memoirs and Nerd Night. So what are your thoughts? Yeah, my, my thoughts, I think it's an exciting thing. I, I love what you guys are doing. I think it's a lot of hard work. I I know I, I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I think it's really cool and like the things you guys have, have brought to the to the community because we don't really have many events like what you guys are saying. You know, we mm -hmm. definitely didn't have those specific events, mm -hmm. but I mean, we have mil million cups and that's pretty much all the only one I could think of that's like a consistent. Maybe I just don't know because maybe mm -hmm. I'm just not looking. Uh, well, you know, One Million Cups is a great event. However, it is a, an entrepreneur support mm -hmm. group yes. that is specifically geared for a certain segment of our population. Yes. It is not like Memoirs and Nerd Night where, you know, that is really, these events are meant for the community. They're mm -hmm. meant for everyone to come, young, old. Um, we don't discriminate. We've had uh, a 16-year-old give a talk at Nerd Night. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we've had everyone, every, everyone that, that is willing to open up and share their story uh, come up to memoirs. And, mm -hmm. you know, in 15, 20 minutes, you get to uh, connect and learn more about someone in our community, someone that can live 15 minutes away from you, five minutes away from you, you and that you never knew. It, even in friendships that you have with someone, uh, sometimes they can be superficial and you just know, oh, how's your day? How's everything going? What's, you know, what's new? But you don't know what got them to where they are today. And memoirs helps do that. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of what it has taken to create these events, it's taken a lot of blood, sweat, and tears mm -hmm. because we're bringing a new paradigm to the city that um, people have not heard of before. Mm -hmm. So Memoirs and Nerd Night are both free events for the community. Mm -hmm. So how do we make any money? Yeah. Uh, well, it's not just the goodness of our hearts as much as we would love to well, be able to do it's that. It's not like we make a lot of money either. We so don't, we're yeah. not doing that for the money. Yeah, we're not, <laughs> we're not doing those things for the money, but you know, money is a, a factor there. You do mm -hmm. need money. Well, we live in a capitalist yes. system. 
We do. We yes. do. We do. <laughs> so, you know, we have contracts with our host venues and we uh, help them. We've we did not choose Mondays for memoirs uh, because we thought it was a good day or we didn't choose Wednesdays for nerd night because we thought it was a good day. We went to them and we asked them, what day do you guys need mm. people to come into your establishments? And that's that's how we got them. And it's worth something to those businesses for us to bring people on their slowest days for sure to come interact bring the people together they buy food they buy drinks and you know that's how we have we're able to create some type of revenue now it's been we just um celebrated our one-year anniversaries for both of these events on march and uh, and april uh, sorry, sorry march and may respectively um and we've only been putting that money back into the business, mm -hmm. putting that money back into the business. We haven't really seen, we haven't paid ourselves anything from this, from mm -hmm. this uh, endeavor yet. Just social capital. Social yeah. capital, exactly. Because we've met so many amazing people in this community that have opened themselves up mm -hmm. to us, that have really trusted us with so much. Um, and what kind of price tag can you put on that? Yeah, and that's actually what, what, what I was... Uh, thinking as you were as you were saying that uh, a lot of the value I get out of this podcast is the people I meet and the the business development for my business as well too. Uh, so, like you said, social capital uh, awareness for for what you, for who you are mm -hmm. leads to awareness of what you do, and so I'm sure it's probably led to some tra training some clients for you for your physical uh, personal training, mm -hmm. and so it's like maybe not like direct like money that comes straight from nerd night but yeah. it's like indirect correct yeah I, yeah i would I, I would think for sure yeah, yeah. And, and that allows you to grow uh the other things too like now that you guys are doing uh the, the wing fest which is probably one that is making revenue i hope yeah <laughs> that's what the it's, goal it's year <laughs> one so let's see yes yeah. it's hard to make a return on a first year business right whenever for you sure. watch shark mm -hmm. tank it's like oh yeah year three mm -hmm. we actually plan to make a profit yes so. <laughs> i mean i'm in year three and and like uh this entire year three because i'm going to be going yeah this is full year three so so yeah this entire year three has been like actually very profitable for me. So awesome. the first two years was very not profitable. Yes. <laughs> very take, bare minimum. That upfront work. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was li living on wages that, that most people probably wouldn't be willing to do. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. for me to move here, I had to start from zero again, mm -hmm. which is not a nice wage. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But thank goodness for this person who loves her job and does well. And she loves you. She's been able to, <laughs> to you know, try to help me get through this. Mm -hmm. But... Mm -hmm look at all the things that we've created because of that. And that's part of the, one of the things that drives me is getting back to where I know I've been in my life, mm -hmm. right? Because I left a very thriving business in Miami mm -hmm. to move here. Sweat, sweat Nation? Sweat Nation, mm -hmm. and, you know, and I had trainers under me, I had four or five people working with me, nice. and I was working with chiropractors, physical therapists, and had this whole mm -hmm. system mm -hmm. where I was already at the point where I decided I didn't even want to work on Fridays anymore. It's like, I'll send everybody else to do the work. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna mountain bike today and just hang out and mm -hmm. have a good time. Yeah. So I was already at the point <laughs> you where You were already working on your business, not Yes, <laughs> I was starting to extract myself more and more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But to come here, we had to look at each other and be like, well, you know, I'm going to have to start from zero, which is what made coming with COVID, not being able to meet people. All mm -hmm. these obstacles that were there, you know, I just... That's why, again, that's why I do jujitsu. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> If I can do that, any other obstacle is... Well, the thing also is... A lot of people, especially in the on entrepreneurial world, I'm not saying that maybe any people that we know, but um, a lot of people look down on people that work for the man. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, you've got a, nine to, a regular nine to five, you've mm -hmm. got a job. And it's like, well, that job is what has allowed us to have the life that we have today. For sure. Um, so, you know, don't look down on it. That's That mm -hmm. job is the reason why we can not charge for Nerd Night and not charge for memoirs. And that's the reason why we're able to do all the things that we are in the community because I have my flexibility with my schedule. I have a very nice salary. And, you know, we can afford to do the things that, that we're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it, it's definitely a help because if I did not have that, if we were both in this entrepreneurial journey mm -hmm. together and that was the our only source of income, we'd be hurting. <laughs> for sure, yeah. yeah. We'd be hurting. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm I'm extremely grateful and thankful for the position that uh, that I'm in. Mm -hmm. Would you say you're an entrepreneur? 
Yeah, mm-hmm. I would say so. Even before that, um, I've dabbled in entrepreneurship uh, mm-hmm. many times in past years. I've had um, healthy meal deliveries that because. Nice. Uh, we started dating and he loved my cooking and he's mm-hmm. like, oh, you cook great. You should do this mm-hmm. for people. And I'm like, you have no a bunch of clients that she probably could. Yeah. <laughs> and that's exactly what it was. I was basically feeding all of his clients. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So I would provide breakfast, lunch and dinner and I would cook um, till two o'clock in the morning, twice a week. Plus have a jo- full time job. Plus go. I was going to school full time mm. at the time as well. Um, definitely burning the candle on both on both ends. I was a single mom. Mm-hmm. You know all all those kind of things. I did that for some time until I just could not anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, and something had to give. And I had that something was that business. I was just like, this is not going to work for me. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of red tape for me to be able to expand that business when it comes to food mm-hmm. industry and being able, you can't just cook out of your own house like yeah. I was doing. Um, you have to have a licensed kitchen, a kitchen yep. and mm-hmm. you have to rent a certain amount of time there. And that's like super expensive. And uh, it, it would not have been financially mm-hmm. feasible for me to be able to do that at that time. Yeah. Um, then I I was laid off from a job um, where I was a, a senior financial consultant for uh, for a big nationwide company, and I was laid off from that job. And I took my um, uh, what's what's that called the they have a like a, not a pension, but it was like a, a I guess a, set, a, a severance mm. pay. Yes, that's what it is. So they gave me a severance pay, and I took that severance pay. I gave myself a two year deadline. I'm like, I'm going to start my own thing. I've got two years. Let's reevaluate this mm-hmm. where I where I'm at. And at the end of the two years, all of my contracts started expiring. No one was renewing the contracts, and I started freaking out. I'm like, oh my mm-hmm. god, what am I gonna do? And out of nowhere, I wasn't even looking for a job. I got um, tapped on the sh- virtual shoulder uh, from LinkedIn, nice. and a, a company owner reached out to me and basically offered me a job, like without even meeting me just from my profile. That's awesome. Um, and two days later, we had an interview. And two days after that, I was basically working again for mm-hmm. the men. <laughs> um, and uh, and so that's been my entrepreneurial journey. And now here we are together doing sophisticated events. Mm-hmm. So I, I, And I think I, I, it's been a, a much better experience. I've taken things that I've learned throughout those those other attempts and mm-hmm. and put it into into this business so i think yeah. we're in a much better position yeah i think that's a that's a good point uh, about uh where the role of you know entrepreneurs and the ro- entrepreneurs and the role of I- I- employees and mm-hmm. you know the different types of of people you know that like not everyone's meant to be an entrepreneur and no. it's it's Definitely not for everyone, yeah. but I mean, not everyone's meant to be an employee either. So, <laughs> yeah. So it's, and there's an, an, mm-hmm. a happy medium, right? There's mm-hmm. uh, there's no no rule that says that you can't do both. That you can't yeah. be both, and mm-hmm. you can't be successful in both of them. Yeah. It's like that's fine. Yeah, I currently am both right now. I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because I'm mostly working in my business, so that means I basically. Uh, buy myself a job essentially so <laughs> yeah yeah and well you're a slave to your business mm-hmm. there the is no I am, yes. specifically yeah. in the beginning yeah there yes. is no nine to five when you are a business owner mm-hmm. there is a round the clock yes like, earlier we <laughs> were talking to about sleep yeah, yeah. Uh, sleep what is that what, yeah. what is the sleeping as we get closer uh, to yeah. wing uh-huh. fest well we were talking earlier is that uh, like I have no problem staying, uh, going to sleep. Mm-hmm. Going to sleep, I'm exhausted by the end of the day. So I knock out, no problem. Nine 9.30, I am, I'm out. Mm-hmm. Uh, but 2 o'clock in the morning rolls around and my brain wakes up again and it's like, boop. My you, eyes you have are open. all these things that you know you need to do. And it's, it's like, like oh you my can't. God. Uh, yeah, you can't. It's not even the things you need to do. It's the things that it's like, what am I not even thinking of that's yes. going to come up? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's why I have lots of lists and lots of sticky notes. I'm, I'm that kind of person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do everything on my phone. I have mm-hmm. notes on my phone. We share notes together. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, if I'm up at two o'clock in the morning i'm writing email drafts so mm-hmm. that i can hit send at a decent time you know you can day. actually uh you can schedule email sent yes mm-hmm. so that's you what i'll do, do that too I'll, yeah. write, I'll write an email at like 2 a.m and schedule it for like 7 a.m and yeah. i'll schedule like four or five of them and i'm sleeping and my emails are being sent <laughs> out <laughs> which there is that is kind of scary though because what if one of those people you were supposed to you were going to reach out to emails you before the email sends because it just happens mm. coincidentally yeah yeah, uh, yeah. Th- then it's like i mean 
it's not that scary. It's not that bad. You can explain it, but it's yeah, just like, sure. what if you send this email and it doesn't make sense and now yeah. they're all confused? So it's, it's, like, it's out of order. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's chaotic. Yeah, <laughs> like I, I love, I love chaos. <laughs> you have to use technology, right? We, we've got so much amazing technology mm-hmm. at our fingertips. You have to. And if you don't <laughs> use technology, it's going to use you. Mm-hmm. So you might as well take advantage of the tools that that you have available to you and and have them work for you. Yeah. Yeah, so 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 you mentioned your son last time. Flip was Flip was on. He was talking about how he's going to be coming out here. Yeah, and he's so gonna, he's, he's going to be needing a job. Is what <laughs> Flip was saying. Yeah, he is. So out how's here. he been doing? He is out here. He's um he actually August first is going to be his one year anniversary for being here. Um, and he was living with us for about three months. Oh, he's got his own place. And now he's got his own place. Uh, well, he has a roommate situation. Nice. Um, I helped him find the job that he currently has. So he's doing well there. He's thriving with that. Um, he comes out and he helps us at some of the events sometimes. He's going to be helping us as one of our staff at Wingfest. So nice. uh, be on the lookout for him if you're there. Um, yeah, he's he's doing well. He has, he's got a car now. He's driving around nice. on the mountains. He spent his first winter here. Mm-hmm. Which but, was his first winter ever. Yeah, right? yeah <laughs> from Miami. Yeah. What's well, winter? You know, it's like 70 degrees in mm-hmm. December in Miami and that's it. Um, but yeah, so... I, he's he's doing good. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's been nice to watch him uh, come into his own. He just turned 20 uh, mm-hmm. in July, so uh, the beginning of July. Um, and it's crazy to think I have a 20-year-old. Like, yeah. What? <laughs> so, For sure. Yeah. Yeah, so 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 Flip, so how's, how's everything been going going with you in, in, in your business the, since the last time you were on? I think it's been a year. Yeah, I think everything is trending in the right direction. I've got more holistic personal training clients uh, over there, still at Garden of the Gods and the Strata Medical Center there. Uh, I've got more jujitsu students. Mm-hmm. I actually just taught a jujitsu class at Garden of the Gods where 20 something people showed up and that was pretty cool. You know, nice. So the class people. like, you, you, mm-hmm. you, go ahead, sorry, you just about to explain it. So. Yeah, just <laughs> teaching people how to defend themselves. So it was an intro to self-defense, just basic, mm-hmm. simple concepts of, you know, somebody comes and tries to grab you. This is how you get out of it and how, you know, you try to create distance so that mm-hmm. you don't get hurt For and sure. things like that. So I'm also doing a, a day every other Wednesday at the Altitude Ninja Gym. So they're letting me experiment there. I'm nice. at the next us doing stuff. Soccer house. I still mm-hmm. do stuff in my garage. Yeah. So Which is a cool garage. The, yeah. <laughs> it's, a pretty, it's a pretty cool garage. Yeah. <laughs> so all that stuff, I believe, is trending in the right direction. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, if you think of Nerd Night and Memoirs, all that stuff, I think, also mm-hmm. is trending in the right direction. We actually just added music to Memoirs for the first time this month. Okay. Where we're having local musicians come okay, in. Okay. I was about to say, you had like... Yeah. Okay. But that was an issue with... The, when you're streaming, you know, when you have when you're playing music. Well, <laughs> the streaming again, and unless we get some big sponsors right now, mm-hmm. we have to just do with what we have. For sure, yeah. But mm-hmm. at least because I've had this vision for a while for memoirs is that I like when the storyteller tells the story, and then the musician goes up and has to match the energy that is awesome. of that story, yes. and they don't know what the a story. A good musician is be. W- would be able to do that too. <laughs> yes, and w- this month we had uh, I don't know. Do you know Angela Layman yes! of Crystallize yeah. <laughs> and their guitar player? I think his name is Benjamin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They were there and they crushed it. Nice. And they were they were the inaugural one, so they set the standard mm-hmm. nice and high. So now we have to keep it there and go beyond. Well, that's another thing that we another way a source of income um we want to be able to pay musicians to be mm-hmm. able to come up here because well, of course you know, yeah. if, you're, if you're a musician that is your job mm-hmm. then how can we ask you to do something for free we right need to pay people like andrew too exactly yeah. <laughs> we need to pay these types of people so we are, are constantly looking for sponsors mm-hmm. so we're looking for sponsors for the music mm-hmm. we're looking for sponsors for someone to sponsor the live streaming things like that mm-hmm. um so uh we recently got a a sponsor for them. We got a sponsor for the next probably two or three, at least I think to the end of the year, we got sponsors for our music sponsor for for memoirs, which we're super excited about because now, you know, we can pay these people to Mm -hmm. come up and, and, and add to the experience. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, to answer your question, I think everything's trending in the right direction, Mm -hmm. but I told her when we moved here, I can go get a job at Lifetime or Villa Sport Mm -hmm. and just, you know, I'll probably make decent money, but it'll kind of just be like 
that. A steady mm-hmm. line, right? Mm-hmm. Where I told her, if you let me do what I want to do, it's going to be hard in the beginning. But eventually, once that mm-hmm. J curve starts going up, the the up will have more up to go. <laughs> and we were talking about people being employees and being entrepreneurs. This guy, he is not an employee. I, I can, I, I can <laughs> already feel he's it. Just, yeah. <laughs> he cannot be an employee. That's <laughs> not his thing. He is an entrepreneur through mm-hmm. and through. So, yeah, yeah. 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 I don't, mm, yeah, like working at Lifetime would have made me miserable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even though I would have done great. I mm-hmm. would have had tons of clients, but just that whole corporate structure and you have to do things this way. And, and I would have worked for them, but they wanted me to not teach jujitsu. And I was like, you are insane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they wanted me to sign a non-compete. And I was like, you just, I can't, I can't deal mm-hmm. with you. And I actually just saw the girl who interviewed me. I saw her at One Million Cups last week <laughs> because she is no longer at Lifetime. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay. She wants to join. And, you know, I, I don't want to speak ill of Lifetime. Mm-hmm. It's a great place. I don't know mm-hmm. if you've ever been into that place, mm-hmm. but they don't skimp on any of the experience of what it is to work out. Okay. That place is the size of like four arenas. Okay. Like that place is enormous. You know, you're going to have all the amenities and all the stuff and mm-hmm. I'm sure it's great. But for me that I like to have my freedom mm-hmm. and when I have an idea, just, you know, have yeah. just try it. That wasn't my type mm-hmm. of place. And there's also clients that are that, that are like that big type of yeah. space is, mm-hmm. isn't for them. Having that in- intimate, you know, experience with one one person is what they want and what works best for them, too. So. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> there's something for everyone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So so when you do those like those classes for your jiu jitsu, are those like to promote your your teach your your actual things are those free or or, or what is what is that it was like? not free this okay. last one thank well, that's goodness. good yes <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it is you know it was like an intro so it's like this is the intro I don't know if they're gonna have us back here again maybe they will because we had such a good turnout mm-hmm. but you can also see me in these other mm-hmm. places if you would like to continue and learn more mm-hmm. about how to it's get, getting them in the door kind of yeah. kind of like I like to use this analogy a lot of the, the times how uh, a car repair place will use a, a fifteen dollar oil change yeah uh, to get you in they get you in because they know down the line if they do a good job you're going to spend five hundred five thousand mm-hmm. when your car needs repaired yes. <laughs> with <Yeah>. them <laughs> well the the people there were so surprised because they had 21 people sign up for his class mm-hmm. 21 people came and paid and yeah mm-hmm. so the you know they're like this never happens like we'll have 21 people sign up and then maybe 15 will show mm. or maybe 10 will show so the fact that it you, you know as many people signed up as, and came they're like wow this is this is mm-hmm. something they're they this is onto something so where was it at, uh, at it was at the kissing camels okay golf building mm-hmm. that they have on the second floor they had an empty room, and we commandeered that room. And okay, mm-hmm. so it's something that they 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 do. They sell space, event space. Well, yeah, they they needed to. They just wanted to use it for something, and they're like, "Hey, let's try this. Mm-hmm. We've never tried anything like this." And I was like, "Sure, I love teaching jujitsu, so you yeah. know, you don't have to twist my arm." And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I could teach people how to twist arms. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so yeah, so someone who who wants to to start an event, maybe they want to help. Uh, help build that culture here of you know like having events like Nerd Night and Memoirs. When they're starting that event, what should they expect, and what would you tell them? They should expect hard work. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> and whatever you think hard work is, as our buddy Grant Cardone talks about, ten x that, mm-hmm. and that's probably <laughs> the beginning of the actual hard work that you need to start doing. For sure. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. So, 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 yeah. So, expect a lot of hard work. Yeah, um, I, I would say to write things down. Write things down. Have some type of a plan before you go into it just blindly, right? Um, mm-hmm. uh, that that definitely helps um, because you you are going to get some resistance. We got mm-hmm. resistance. We got resistance because no one had ever had that type of a business. Um, Model. model before um, the 
our event venues that we approached, they were like, what? We're going to pay you guys to do something? I was like, you you guys need to rent the space from us. I'm like, mm-hmm. well, that's not the way this goes. Yes. We're bringing you mm-hmm. people and people are worth something well, because mm-hmm. people are going to be spending money at your location. Mm-hmm. So they are going to be paying you for th- for being at the space. Mm-hmm. You guys are going to be paying us for bringing you those people. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, mm-hmm. it really depends what type of business model, if you're, if you're going to be an events person, what is the... Who is your um, audience? Mm-hmm. Who are you doing the events for? And then what your business model is going to be. Are you going to charge the people? Or are you going to charge the venues? Or are you going to find your money or some other way? Are you going to find sponsors and be purely based on sponsors? Mm-hmm. Um, one way or another, if you want to be sustainable, you do have to have some type of income coming in because mm-hmm. you're going to have to spend money on on things. We had to buy a projector. We had to mm-hmm. buy a projector screen. We've had to buy sound equipment and uh, tons of other stuff to be able to make our um, our events successful Mm -hmm. so um yeah be be prepared for no's and don't take them personally Mm -hmm. we we got plenty of no's and we were like okay that's their loss Mm -hmm. in a couple years when they see how things how amazing things are then Mm -hmm. they're going to be knocking on our door and they're going to be like hey how about bringing us a couple yeah a couple people right Mm -hmm. right now with our events we have an average of about 60 people for our monthly events coming to nice coming to them um you know in a post-covid world that's Mm -hmm. pretty awesome but we don't want to stop there. Mm-hmm. That's not. We're not complacent with that. Uh, you know, in Miami, pre-COVID, we had at Nerd Night in Miami, there was over a hundred people, one hundred fifty people. Mm-hmm. Um, that is also a bigger city. <laughs> it is. Mm-hmm. It is. But Colorado Springs it's is not, growing. Yeah, it's growing. Mm-hmm. It's going to surpass Denver in what? What's the projection? Five years. We've got a twenty-five story building coming to downtown. Mm. We've got over a thousand uh, rental units being built currently in downtown. All those people, guess what? They're coming from big cities. Oh, yeah. And they're expecting <laughs> these types of events. For sure. In the cities that they're going to call home. Mm-hmm. So why not be the ones be providing here it? already. Yeah. You know? be, be there waiting for them. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's, like it's here. Come on. I didn't know about that, the the 25-story building. I didn't I didn't know about the projections. Uh, for some reason, that doesn't seem possible to, p- plausible to me, how... how <laughs> It's, Springs it's can grow approved. bigger than Denver. Yeah, they've okay. been they've been talking about uh, light rails from Denver to mm-hmm. uh, to COS. Um, there's already there's people that um, they live here and they work in Denver. Oh yeah, all the time. Or yeah. vice versa. Mm-hmm. Um, that it, it it's it it doesn't seem unplausible. Mm-hmm. It, it seems very very possible. And mm-hmm. and then you have um, a bunch of publications, both online and print, mm-hmm. that have awarded us with one of the best places to live. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Why we've got all these amazing green spaces. Mm-hmm. We've got um, community. Mm-hmm. We've got um, within a, an hour or, or or so of us, we've got even more places that we have access to. Yes. We are. An, an amazing hub our our um, airport our airport is is growing mm-hmm. we just have southwest this in the past year we've had southwest mm-hmm. now is a hub for colorado springs airport there's no longer the days that you have to go to denver to get an, a, a flight mm-hmm. and it's extremely accessible so why why not mm-hmm. yeah because after you pay yeah. for 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 travel or parking uh, at Denver Airport, you're spending the same amount. It, yes, it is yeah. cheaper. The tickets are, but after you pay for the travel or, mm-hmm. or the parking yeah. or you know it's, or it's the, the Uber, same. whatever it is, it's the same. Yeah, <laughs> an Uber from here to Denver is like a hundred bucks. Yeah, it's a hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and the parking, if you're if depending on how long you're there, mm-hmm. I'm usually gone for a few days a week. Uh, it's about eighty bucks, a hundred bucks, you know. So <laughs> and there's still something just very about Colorado Springs that. Again, it's in the center of the state. Mm -hmm. And between Denver and Colorado Springs, we are right on the front range where Denver is still a little off, right? Mm -hmm. right? So Mm -hmm. we are in the middle. And I literally consider this city more than Denver Mm -hmm. the doorstep to the west. Yeah, Yeah. for sure. Because after this, it's boom, (laughs) mountains. We... Denver was not even um, a thought for Me us neither. to move Me to. <laughs> so Denver is just another city. Uh, honestly, I mean, I'm sure that there are a lot of things that set it apart from other cities. And, and and it is beautiful. And there are a lot of amazing things to do there and and all that. But we came from Miami. Miami is a huge city. Mm-hmm. Why would I want to live in another 
big yeah. city. That that was not my thing. I told him the only way that we are moving to Colorado is if it's in Colorado Springs and I want to live north of 24 and west of 25. I want to be right up on the mountains, yes. as close <laughs> to the mountains as I can be. Mm -hmm. We tried to get a place in Manitou, but you know, at that time, the market was crazy and mm -hmm. people were outbidding people for houses and paying $50,000 over asking price. Mm -hmm. Like Now things have calmed down quite a bit, but now we're set with a bunch of uncertainty with the market, not mm -hmm. only real estate, but the whole world. So in, in two years, things have changed yeah. dramatically. So mm -hmm. I'm glad that we came when it was that we came. Um, but yeah, we... we we still have, we are a city. We're the second biggest city in Colorado. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, soon we'll, we'll, we'll be the first. Um, I just imagine that Denver is going to grow as well too. Yeah. So it's yeah. Denver will grow as well. The thing with this place is that it's sprawl. Yeah. Right? Everything grows out. Denver's mm -hmm. kind of going to have to stay there. So everything, mm -hmm. Denver will still feel more like a city mm -hmm. than Colorado Springs ever will because everything is so spread out here. Mm -hmm. And then each area here has like its little area to hang out in. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to go to downtown, right? You can yeah. be like, oh, I'm going to stay over here on, you know, Main Street or mm -hmm. I'm going to be over here by Interquest. There's plenty mm -hmm. of stuff here. I don't need to because mm -hmm. it's so spread. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's yeah, those buildings well, are coming. Yeah. You have the 8,000 uh, seat um, Empty. Amphitheater yeah. that's coming to the Interquest Briargate mm -hmm. area. So now people might think twice well mm -hmm. why do i have to go all the way to denver to go see a big act exactly. we can have them right here in our own backyard mm -hmm. and again with all of those people that's hotel room nights that's rental cars that's people flying into our airports like restaurants you, restaurants, you know put, pumping in more money into mm -hmm. our community to be able to to have us grow and expand yeah, giving you way more guests for your cos business podcast oh yeah <laughs> i'm gonna have to hire a second host <laughs> but uh, there's another part that i didn't answer of your question of what it takes and that's that networking part mm -hmm. getting in front of people mm -hmm. meeting people getting people to know like and trust you as they say you mm -hmm. know because who am i when i got here yeah. from anybody else it's flipping a dude yeah, <laughs> and somehow i guess you know when i meet people i really want to get to know them which, mm -hmm. if you think about memoirs, what is that? It's mm -hmm. a story where we really get to know somebody, mm -hmm. who they are from a very vulnerable space, which yeah. takes a lot of strength to put yourself out there like that. You know, I could actually give you some insight, I guess, of mm -hmm. my first impressions when I, when I saw you. It was at the, the grand opening of 3E's, actually. Okay. Uh, mm. I, I think that was that night. Uh, was did it you, did Carlos you get, Mencia? Yeah, Carlos Mencia. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh, I was sitting in the VIP section, mm -hmm. uh, uh, before the show started and I was t talking to Frank Sinclair and you know, or I was talking to someone and I seen Frank Sinclair just go over and just be like, just say, say what's up flip. You know, he, he said that to you and it's like, you guys probably only met each other like once or twice at that point. But, but you know, like I just, you had an energy about you that I was like, I gotta, I gotta know that guy, you know? Yeah. yeah and we and spent now, some good time together. Yeah. <laughs> and now F Frank Sinclair is one of our MCs at Wingfest. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So. Frank's Frank Sinclair uh, as an MC is a good, is a good choice yes. because he, he can keep the, the, the energy, energy high, yes. for sure. And I like I like to say that Frank Sinclair is the CEO of Colorado Springs, oh, the yeah. chief encouragement <laughs> officer yes, he of is. Colorado he Springs. He is, 100% when it comes to that. It's like when I first Absolutely. came out here, it's like, and you probably felt that too. It's like when I was starting, he knew I was starting my business, you know, I'd post post things and he was he would be there, you know, like right on the front lines, just, you know, encouraging me, you know, and like, mm -hmm. you know, I, and I was like feeling so sh so shitty. <laughs> yeah, but what better CEO can you think of than, than Frank mm -hmm. for this town here? Exactly, yes. So, <laughs> of course, th there was no question who I wanted to have as the MC. And we can even talk about that. Let's talk about the entertainment for the best of the West Wing. Let's do it, yeah. So, we have Frank Sinclair as our MC. DJ Shield, James Flowers. Yeah, he, is he keeps our the DJ. energy high too. Exactly. Between the we both just wrapped of them. up a video actually. It's so good. I can't wait till he shares it. Oh, awesome. So yeah. just think those two guys on stage <laughs> together, mm -hmm. bouncing back between each other. And then we have a, a friend of ours that I met at Garden of the Gods. Her name is Carissa. Mm -hmm. And she's going to be called the Wing Woman. And she's going to be in the crowd. Mm -hmm. So Frank is going to be like, oh, let's kick it to the Carissa. Okay. And she's going to be in the crowd. Oh, what do you think are the best wings? Or look at these restaurants. Look how they're making it. Mm -hmm. And she's super bright and bubbly and platinum blonde. So she will is stand it, out. Is it uh, Carissa Hall? Carissa no. Salina. Okay. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Carissa Salina, yeah. So she's going to be the wing woman. Uh, we are beginning the wing fest with 
A brass the, ensemble. The New Horizons Band of Colorado Springs. They're mm -hmm. going to get four or five of their members and they're going to play the Star Spangled Banner while uh, with an opera singer. So that's how we're kicking off the Wing Fest. Sorry. Nice. <laughs> and then we're one of our nonprofit partners is the Colorado Springs Children's Chorale. They're so celebrating then, their 45th anniversary in the strings here. So they're going to come out then and sing America the Beautiful. And I don't know if you've ever seen the children's chorale, mm. but this is not just a bunch of children singing. Mm -hmm. This is like a minor league for Broadway. Mm. Like the level okay. that these kids are at is like, whoa. And a little side note, that song was written here in Colorado Springs. Exactly. So we have to we have yeah. to have that song. Yeah. <laughs> so and then I think they and the brass ensemble will sing two or three songs after that. And then we are going to have as our first musical act that's not part of, of just the Star Spangled Banner and that opening is Ryan Flores. Okay, yeah, he's good. Yeah, yeah. and uh, he's going to be sponsored by College Hunks because the girls think he's, he's hunky. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> we got that. And then after that, we're going to have our Nerd Night talk on the history of Buffalo Wings. Then we're going to have our clean comedian. I think Eric told me it's a guy named Russell Keller. Mm -hmm. So we have that guy. And then we're going to have a mariachi band. Nice. And then we may have another Nerd Night and Clean Comedian. I'm still waiting to confirm on those two. But after that, we will have uh, Trick. Have you ever heard of Trick? Mm -mm. Well, Trick is a band from here also. And they do like uh, Motown, Prince, like R&B, kind of that type okay. of music. So mm -hmm. they will go on. And then after they're done, we're going to have the chicken wing eating competition for the belt. I should have brought the belt. Oh, you should have. Yeah. I should have <laughs> brought the belt. And then Party who can belt. eat the hottest wing for the chain? And then we will announce who has the best sauce or dry rub. And then the festival favorite. And right before we do the festival favorite, we're going to have Letitia Hardy come out. Mm -hmm. And the girls are going to shake it because, again, I don't know what's hotter than that. Yeah. <laughs> and then we give away who wins the best wing. And then after that, Wirewood Station comes on nice. to shut it down. Yeah. So Sweet. that's the, yeah. the entertainment <laughs> for the best of the West Wing. And this is a one day event of, from what time? Noon to eight. Okay. Mm -hmm. Noon to eight. And well, how big are you guys expecting this to be? Well, this year we are capping it at a thousand. So okay. if you haven't got your tickets, get them before they, they sell out. But my ultimate vision is to make this a weekend mm -hmm. festival, 10,000 people, mm -hmm. headline bands, you know, national. Get a Zach Brown band to come down oh, here yeah, or somebody cool. really big mm -hmm. and that will sell out, you know, mm -hmm. 10,000 people and just hang out and eat wings, drink beer, and have a good time with people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You got to get someone who has like a, a song about wings, like a, oh, a well, famous song Zach, about wings. Zach Brown has the chicken fried song. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah. A little mm -hmm. bit of chicken fried. Oh, yeah. That's mm -hmm. his biggest beer one. on Friday night. <laughs> yeah. There's that one, right? Um, there is the chicken wing song. Anything called love. <laughs> yes. Love that song. So, <laughs> you know, uh, I need to look for all the chicken reference songs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> make a playlist. <laughs> yeah. That'd be great. <laughs> Have I wish fun. I could think of one off off tops besides that one you just said, but mm -hmm. but yeah, I can't think of it. But. Oh, there's a bunch. <laughs> Sibo oh, yeah. Mato has a song about, chicken, about song. chicken wings or about, about chicken, chicken in general. Okay, yeah, I'm <laughs> sure I'm sure we can find it on the YouTube. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, just chicken. Little Chris on. has a has an album called Chicken and Beer. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes. yes. And he's eating a big piece of fried chicken with his gold chain. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. All right. So yeah. So I think uh, this about wraps it up. Um, is there anything else uh, that people should know before we close this out? Best of the West Wingfest.com. Get your tickets and uh, let's have a good time together. All yeah, right. That's basically Sweet. it. <laughs> Are we going to eat a wing here? Yeah, let's go ahead and eat a wing on, on oh, camera. <laughs> let's do this. All right. So, this has been the COS Business Podcast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we'll see you guys on the next one. See you on the next one. Peace out. Great. Oh, yeah. That was good. Good episode. <laughs> awesome.